meeting to order. Um, we have a couple things we have to do before we start. We have to swear in some new members. So if they want to come forward and we can do that. Out here. Where are we? Your right? Yeah, they have to come up here. And if I don't know if one of the board members wants to handle roll call. Jennifer Marr here. Jarde Washington here. Jeannie Lucas here. Cynthia Wiley here. Austin Yao here. John Hamby here. Aaron Cunningham here. And now Vice Chair, we'll entertain nominations for chairman of this board. Um, as you know, we um, lost our chairman due to the expiration of his term in July, so we'll need to take nominations from the floor and then cast votes. I'll nominate Cynthia Wiley. As what, as chair? Yes. Yes, ma'am. We're taking nominations for chairman. Uh, I nominate uh, Jenny Lucas. I second the nomination for Jeanette Lucas based on her experience on the board. Do we have any other nominations from the floor for chairperson? All right. Um, well, let's take a, a vote. All those in favor of uh, Miss Jeannie Lucas? Aye. Please, by show of hands. All right. Ms. Jeannie Lucas is our chairman. Um, do we want to go ahead and follow that up with vice chair, or we can do that at the end of the meeting? Do you have a preference, Madam Chair? We can do that now. Okay. All right. We'll accept nominations from the floor for vice chair. Uh, I would nominate Jarda Washington. Mm. I'll second that. I'll third that. Okay. Any other nominations? All right. Let's take a vote. 
by a show of hands for Jarday Washington for vice chair. All right. Okay. Now we can move on to the business at hand tonight. Thank you so much for that. Should we go ahead and rotate seats here? No, no, no. Yeah, if we could do a quick uh, rotate in seats, since we're going to be working with a script with the new chairman, uh, chairperson, if Aaron could switch with Jeannie, the new chair. I apologize for the swapping of seats. We are trying to maintain as much distance as we can, um, and so that's the reason for the, the table out front. And this will get the chairman closer to us with, um, with the script. Yeah, we can help. Uh, yeah, we can help with you with tonight getting used to uh, sure. going through the steps. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free. Feel free to ask. All right. Well, I'll just read from the script if that works for everybody. Uh, the meeting will now come to order. Welcome to the meeting of the Indian Trail Board of Adjustments, November nineteenth, twenty twenty. My name is Jeannie Lucas. And I think we're, uh, we've made it through roll call. And okay, let's adopt the minutes then. Yeah. Okay. All right. We will consider the minutes from the last meeting of the board. Are there any questions or concerns? And that was all the way from, uh, I believe, October of last year. A motion that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Are we all in favor of approving the minutes? Yes. 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 Okay. Show of hands or? Show of hands is great. Right. Yes, thank you. Okay. And it's hard to see behind you, but. They've all agreed. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then the minutes have been approved from the last meeting. These are a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearing. That means it is like a court hearing. State law, general statute, set specific procedures and rules concerning how this board must make its decisions. These rules are different from other types of land use decisions like a rezoning case. The board's discretion is limited. The board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. A quasi-judicial decision is not a popularity contest. It is a decision constrained by the standards of the ordinance and based off the facts presented. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standards, not personal preference or opinion. Participation is limited. This meeting is open to the public. Everyone is welcome to watch. Parties with standing have rights to participate fully. Parties may present evidence, call witness, and make legal arguments. 
Parties are limited to the applicant, the local government, and individuals who can show they will suffer special damages. Other individuals may serve as witnesses when called by the board. General witness testimony is limited to facts, not opinion. For certain topics, this board needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. The topics include projections about impacts on property values and projections about increased traffic. Individuals providing expert opinion must be qualified experts and provide the factual evidence upon which they base their expert opinion. We are now open the evidentiary hearing for 2020-0029, lot 182, home width reduction. The property is located at 5109 Ali Sheba Drive, Indian Trail. This is a variance hearing. A four-fifths vote of the board is required to grant a variance. Witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. At this time, we will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony. So, Madam Chair, I will say due to COVID, uh, what we will do is we will administer the oath for the applicants that are in the room. Okay. And then once we bring up uh, those members of the public, we'll, we'll do that as well so that we don't have everyone in the room at the same time. Oh, so you want to do it for the staff first? Okay, sure. Do you have the Bible? swear or affirm the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you guide. Thank you. Great. Well, since the applicants, any of the applicants, anyone who may have the potential to speak or um, present evidence, I'll take them at this point. Okay. We're just doing a separate so we can give people space. Okay, if you can put your hand up. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Is that everybody gonna speak? Okay. Okay. I'll now read the disclosure. The parties to this case are entitled to an impartial board. A board member may not participate in this hearing or if she or he has a fixed opinion about the matter. A financial interest Sorry, in the... A board member may not participate in this hearing if she or he has a fixed opinion about the matter, a financial interest in the outcome of the matter, or a close relationship with an affected person. Do any of the board members have any particularly, or sorry, partially, partiality to disclose and recusal to offer? Oh, 
Nobody, okay. The parties to this case have the rights to an ex parte communication to be disclosed. Ex parte communication is a communication about the case outside of the hearing. That may include site visits as well as conversations with party staff or the general public. Does any board member have any site visits to disclose? I have not taken a site visit to the property, but I do live in the same neighborhood, just on the other side of the neighborhood. So I know of the property. Thank you. Okay. And I have seen on um, next door that people have posted about it and I did respond that it was coming upcoming to be a meeting that just letting them know regarding the property. Um, but that's a, that's all. I did do a site visit. I just drove by to look at, see the, where the lot was. Okay. Okay, I think we can now hear from staff. Let me see how close I need to get to this, this microphone. Um, so as mentioned, this is a variance for lot 182, Ali Sheba Drive in Bonterra Village. Variance 2020-0029. Oops. Now the request is to only, the only request about this is, can they reduce the width of the platted home width to meet setbacks encroached on by adjacent homes. The applicant is Bobby Anderson Fisher, of Bobby Thomas Builders. Location, lot 182 on Ali Sheba Drive in Bonterra, in Bonterra Village on a vacant 0.1 acre parcel. The existing zoning, conditional zoning, single family high density, SF5. The required process was determined a variance is needed for this home width to allow the home to be permitted further. Here's the vicinity of the subject property in Monterra. It's a little bit closer up with the parcel number indicated. Uh, the zoning repeated there and the 0.1 acres again. Typically, there's what were referred to as row type houses. Here's the previously recorded final plat that was in your packets. The uh, property. is in that area. Let me try to use my cursor in case you're looking on your screen. It's in that area. So it was originally planned in the original approval for the master plan for the development and site plans for this lot to be built on. Here's a photograph of a lot and a zoning sign there. Another shot directly down the property. So part of the staff analysis, uh, summarized from your packets, the required side setbacks are three feet on each side uh, for each property. So that equals a total of six feet between each home. The typical building width in this area of Bonterra Village is 24 feet. Even though the lot is the standard width of 30 feet, the homes on both sides of the subject lot have encroached when the builder built them. It encroached into their own setbacks, a total of 0.76 feet or 9.12 inches. This results in the subject lot being restricted to a home no wider than 23.78 feet. And see the following image. So this was a, a recent survey that was done. Uh, they surveyed between the homes to the other existing homes and showed on 
on the lot 183 side, on the left side of the, looking at the front of the house, uh, the total side setback was 2.94 feet, not the required three feet for that home. On the other side, lot 181 side, the total was 2.84 feet, not the three feet. Uh, there were some comments that came in later. Uh, one of the homeowners, a uh, gentleman, may be speaking later uh, tonight, uh, had reported some, some things that was more related to my review of the survey when they were submitting the packet and I was asking for more information to try to get a complete application packet. And uh, they brought up the note from when the packet was posted before that uh, I didn't have the surveyor put his final stamp on it and that was because he had responded to some comments to provide me some additional information on there and uh, and I hadn't, I just got the final PDF and went with it. So the little boxes there show his, uh, the new survey. Uh, Crystal, if, if I could borrow you and or Lori to, uh, I wanna submit this, uh, it just came in and it has those same stamps on it. Nothing else has changed, just this, just where he's a uh, surveyor has signed it, so it's a signed copy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. There was other information in the packet uh, that was commented on, but it wasn't appropriate for me to address other than the stuff that was related to the plat. Uh, so some material may be submitted to, uh, uh, to see if it's evidentiary to be heard later tonight. As mentioned in the previous slide, the required maximum home width resulting from the offsite encroachments is 23.78 feet. The proposed home width to finished wall is 23.425 feet. Home foundation, uh, that's uh, underneath it where they pour the footings, is 23.3 feet just as a side note. So basically to the outside walls of the finished home, the 23.425 will fit within the required uh, uh, setback that we're asking for for that nine point something inches uh, to make up for the encroachment. After the variance, the town will issue a zoning permit, but the applicant will still be required to go through any outside agency approvals as they're putting together their package as any other home builder uh, with the county, such as uh, County Building Code Enforcement Department and they review plans and then they issue the trade permits like plumbing, plumbing uh, uh, structural, et cetera, and then they do their required inspections. So they'll, they'll be the ones to scrutinize other parts uh, uh, if we just uh, approve the zoning portion. In addition to the staff analysis for just comprehensive plan consistency, for land use and housing goal, improve neighborhoods to create strong and vibrant communities. Um, this was a submittal that was approved previously um, in a conditional approval, and uh, it also needed to meet plan consistency at that time. So we we view that if, if nothing else is restricting this, that it's a continuation of helping this community uh, be vibrant by completing their development. The new home construction would provide the property owner the expected use of their property according to valid town development approvals for Bonterra Village. Staff summary. Staff officially enters the presentation, testimony, and the staff report in the public record for the board's consideration. All property owners within 500 feet of said property were notified. A sign was posted on the site. So at the conclusion, uh, I'll just reiterate before additional information is provided. For presentation of evidence, 
uh, an important thing in the statutes. This language comes from our statutes. All presenting uh, evidence must be sworn in, as we've already seen. Uh, material presented must be related to the actual request and be competent material or competent material and substantial evidence, which is typically evidence admissible in a court of law. Competent evidence shall not include the opinion of testimony of lay witnesses as to any of the following use of property in a particular way that would affect the value of other property, a resulting increase in vehicular traffic posing a danger to public safety, matter about which only expert testimony would generally be admissible under the rules of evidence. The board chair shall rule if uh, the material to be or being presented is admissible, if the presenter is a professional witness, and on any objections that are made during the case. So I can go into uh, the criteria for, for determination and, and through towards the voting process after we look at the speakers. Um, so um, whoever we have first. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the applicant next. Okay. The applicant. Bobby Anderson will now present evidence and legal argument in support of the request. As a reminder, any evidence and argument must focus upon applicable standards. Before you begin, please state for the record your name, address, relation to the case, and confirm that you were sworn in at the start of the hearing. Hello, my, my name is uh, Ricardo Fisher with uh, Bobby Thomas Builders. I'm the uh, VP of Operation um, for the construction company. And um, I'm pretty much presenting that we are um, looking to, of course, construct a new construction on this uh, Lot 182 um, and also to um, buy this lot from Habitat from Humanities um, so they can move on from uh, the, the property. Um, we custom designed a plan to fit um, within the um, required setbacks and because um, um, we did uh, real, we found out after we did the survey that it didn't uh, did not meet um, the requirements but uh, like I said by, um, by us being a custom company we was able to design the plan to still meet the uh, requirements of the community and um, to stay within the um, the ordinance of the uh, neighborhood. Um, so basically our goal is to really um, get a, build a new home for hopefully a new homeowner and like you said, complete the neighborhood and um, also where Habitat can move forward and hopefully with the money that they get from us, they can move on and do something else positive in the uh, neighborhood. Um, we hired a surveying company to what you guys got tonight um far as um and they came out and did all the legwork on Ashiba and um pretty much uh kind of re reiterate or um reestablish kind of what was originally done from the developer that originally um did the homes and like and of course that some of those homes of course was encroaching so uh, made our job a little bit tougher, but we was able to um, get it done and, and present it to where um, we can meet all the requirements of, of the town of uh, Indian Trail. Okay, does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Do I understand that the uh, Homeowners Association's architectural group also has approved your plan? Yes, sir, they have. Okay. 
based on everything I'm seeing, it, the ask is is only the nine nine inches. <laughs> We're building a smaller home. Yes, ma'am. In conformity with everything that's already there. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? And it was the previous developer that encroached on the lot? Correct. Yes, sir. On both sides, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I have no further questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that the list of the people that are going to come up, or is there a list, or do I just? So we must have a representative from Habitat for Humanity. Okay. You could say your name and your address for the record. Yes, my name is Mike Reese. I'm the executive director of Union Anson County Habitat for Humanity. We build safe, affordable housing throughout Union and Anson County. Our address is 3702 Old Charlotte Highway. Our main office is located in Monroe. I just want to share a little bit about the history so you understand the situation. Uh, the previous developer developed that community in the area of Ontario Village. And two and a half years ago, he donated several properties to our organization, hoping that we could resell them and continue to support affordable housing in Union County. And we previously had sold two other lots in the area, and we got ready to sell lot 182. And when the Bobby Thomas Builders approached us, wanted to make an offer on the lot. We were not aware that there were any problems with the lot. And it was as a result of the research being done that we found that the lot was out of conformity by just a few inches. And so we encouraged them to approach uh, Indian Trail about requesting the variance at this point in time. We would encourage you to grant the variance for several reasons. One is the fact that without granting the variance, the lot really has no value to our organization. And it's also by granting the variance, you would also allow a minority builder to come into the community and build. Uh, we do not build two-story homes or garages. So we have no alternative. We develop houses that are 1,200 to 1,400 square feet with no garages or carports. So our intention is to use the funding once the sale goes through to help us build a house in Marshville where we have an active community going on. So we would just ask that you support the variance and grant it uh, to help two organizations that are providing affordable housing in the area. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Okay. Thank you. That's the only person we had on the list that wants to speak. Is there anybody else? Okay. Um, no. You can come up and get sworn in.
following swear or affirm the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. State your name and address for the uh, record. Name is Edwin Sudreth, 5107 Alley Sheba Drive, uh, Indian Trail, North Carolina 28079. I'm the adjacent uh, property uh, to the applicant. Okay. Do you have get one of these or uh it'll it's on the it's screen, on the screen. okay yeah. perfect okay i feel like a big jerk up here coming after uh trying to Skin. stop habitat Skin. <laughs> So I've lived in uh, at this lot for almost two years now, um, and I've seen a handful, over five, um, surveyors come out here and try to figure out what's going on with this lot, and everyone has backed out um, except for this one. And um, my understanding um, through communication with the town and uh, residents was that when Ali Sheba was built, it was built too short, um, and that this lot kind of absorbed the discrepancy between them. And I'm not arguing that what's out there when you go find pins in the uh, roadway uh, or even irons at the corners for this one particular lot does not measure what it is. And if you go to the next slide. Um, so, I mean, from irons in the uh, pins that are in the road, so when a surveyor goes out there, they locate these to base, uh, figure out where their property's uh, corners are. The nails in the road, based on this, measure 30 feet, but it doesn't, on this particular survey, the one that I have, and I saw Tim has one that's actually signed now, um, but the dimension is at the pins in the road, and in the hierarchy of surveying, typically pins are in the road or lower on the left list your irons that are actually up on the property driven into the ground or a higher level of survey. Um, so that wasn't on there. And then also they only located the lot 182 uh, lot. They didn't locate to ensure that my property and my joint, the property next to me were actually what they're supposed to be. So all this is based off of a recorded plat. But if you go to keep going to the next slide. Um, go to another, the next one. Next one. So when I wheeled off the center line uh, uh, from one block to, of Ali Sheba to the other, based on the recorded plat, it's supposed to measure 439 feet. Well, I realize that I'm wheeling off. It's not survey grade, but I came up with 436.1. So it's uh, somewhere there's a discrepancy in that. So they're saying that the developer that originally built this um, messed up and encroached on um, this lot. Well, I'm thinking that maybe not even just messed up this lot, the whole, everyone's property on this lot, uh, street is messed up. All the irons are messed up, and hence why they donated it to Habitat because it was deemed not buildable. Um, that's what I kind of see based on the information that I've been presented. And if you'll go back a couple slides, Tim, please. Um, back a couple more. Uh, so this is my lot, the one on the right. Um, the, so the water meter for lot 182 is actually on my property. Well, it's in the public right away, but it's right on the back of the right away. So I don't even know how you would tie that in to without encroaching onto my property. Um, and then the image on the left is the AC unit for my, na my neighbor's property, and it measures uh, 39, 38 inches from the foundation wall. So their AC units encroaching into lot 182. 
So whose responsibility is it going to be to uh, relocate that AC unit um, in the future? Um, keep going, a couple more slides. So this is just bringing into question the block length. Um, this kind of points out um, my map. So my deed says that uh, based on the iron, my property actually is two feet further over. Um, and that may or may not, I'm, I'm not a surveyor, I don't know, that may or not be my iron that's currently located or one that's not. Um, but I just thought that it, that it was um, worth noting that there has been discrepancies on Ali Sheba and just because you're finding irons that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the correct ones. So from my standpoint, I feel like Ali Sheba really needs to be surveyed every single house along it to make sure that all the properties on there actually have the 30 feet width that they supposedly bought when they referenced this deed in Platt in Platwood H105. Next slide, Tim. Next. Uh, this is, we can skip this. This is more opinion based, but um, just noted that flooding was a concern on my street. So additional impervious area is just going to exacerbate that. And I've I've actually mowed that lot because it's not been mowed the entire time I lived there. And if it's rained any time within like the last week and a half, it's just a swamp. Like you can't even hardly walk in it. So that's all I have. Thank you, Edwin. Yep. Thank you. I'd like to have a copy. Can I ask a question? What is your profession? Uh, I'm a professional engineer. Okay. Thank you. Can I also have a copy of that? I'll take one as well. Thank you. Just quickly, while the board is looking, they have um, quite a bit of work on their hands as they're looking through um, the findings of facts. So if you see them writing and their heads down, um, please don't take offense to that. But I did want to just make sure that there wasn't anyone else who wanted to submit evidence for this hearing. Thank you. May I ask a question to staff? Uh, has there been any similar cases to this in Bonterra? Any similar circumstances? Not that I'm aware of. The closest um, case that we had is, um, as as uh, testimony was given earlier today, twenty grand um, mm -hmm. in in Bonterra had some lots that were also donated to Habitat. Um, however, they did not have the issue that, that this one has. So, um, and also just to speak to, 
Um, you know, you saw the email from staff. I wanted to clarify that um, when we looked at this initially, you know, our answer from the book is they need, you know, a one foot variance on each side. Um, you got to give the applicant credit for being creative. Everyone else, I think, had approached it the same way. Um, so you'll see that this request is a little bit of a spin on that where, um, okay, instead of asking for the one foot variance, we're going to reduce the, the width of the house to bring it into compliance. So it's more of a, an architectural variance than it is a setback variance. So there was a little bit of twist to the story um, from over a year ago. May I ask a question of the builder? What what would the plan be for um, the HVAC system that might be in, in the way of building? Can you address that? Um, so kind of um, so kind of how we were looking at approaching that it says AC units are not typically permanently set, so it can can the unit be adjusted to clear the line? That's kind of what um, our, our thought and process was. And I, I did, um, we did get a chance to um, see his list of questions. So uh, we did respond. And I um, wanted to, I don't know if it got submitted in, but I do want to hand that over as well. Sure. But your AC sure. unit can be within your specifications in the lines. Yes, sir. What's highlighted is what our response was to this question. Jim, is, is part of the reason for these variances, differences, is it the siding on the houses, is that what is helping protrude over on the lots? Uh, excuse me, what was that again? When we're saying that the, every house is over the three foot limit, is that because the foundation may be three foot, but the siding may be on top of that or? Um, not get, get, I'm not sure what happened between all the other houses. Mm -hmm. We didn't make the applicant. There was only so much, you know, if, if it's out of his scope, we don't want to make him do extra work, mm -hmm. but just properly survey the stuff in between. So um, uh, there's also indication on their survey where we have other uh, builders that uh, think that setbacks only apply to foundations. But the wall, when they add the wall to it, as you see on our survey, the wall adds like 0.16 or whatever siding. Uh, for siding and whatever. And so they need to take the main wall as part of that setback also. And let me just add to that. So um, I think it was briefly mentioned before, but basically you had, you know, Alashipa Drive is a certain um, distance or length. And then as they slowly started building houses, they realized that they didn't have that length that they thought they did originally. And so this lot um, is where it all um, came, to, came to a head at. Mr. Fisher, I'm sorry, I do have a question for you. Um, in regards to the two houses that are already there, you're not trying to reduce their side by side width, right? Correct. As far as distance in between the homes. Right. So I'm still going to maintain the um, neighborhood distance side setback. That's why we custom draw it and reduce the size to accommodate the three foot um, side setback rule. So we will have when the house is constructed, it will meet the um, orders of the neighborhood and uh, the other town ordinance. Okay, okay. Mr. Edwin, is that your concern? Is that the house is going to be too close to yours? No, my, no, I'm not honestly faulting that the lot is what it is. What I'm saying is that when someone buys a piece of property off a deed and they think they're buying 30 feet of property, um, that's what they think they're buying. But I feel like someone on that street who's a current property owner is getting shorted their property because the whole length of the road, from what I measured, doesn't add up. Okay. So someone's getting shorted. They think they have 30 feet right now, and they probably don't. They probably have like 28 feet. And I, I don't know if I can speak to this, um, but uh, my neighbor, she's a realtor, and she just sold something on um, Backstretch, and they had to go back and replat 
the three adjoining lot, or their lot, and the two adjoining ones because the irons were off and they were off. So when they went and did a title search, um, they realized that this was off, the the lines were off or something to where they had to go back and actually re go and get the adjoining property owners to swap land to where it made it a conveyable mm -hmm. lot. Uh, from what I understood is what she was telling me. Um, okay. So that's my concern is if the block length is too short, someone's absorbing that three foot, two foot discrepancy. Right. Um, and I just don't want it to be me. I don't want it to be one of my neighbors. And when we go to sell our house in three years and realize, hey, we don't have the 30 feet that needs to be that it comes back on one of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I passed out the response. Uh, one of the basic themes of the response back from the surveyor was they didn't have uh, a survey uh, submitted to them to respond to. They, they didn't want to respond to just the comments. So if, if they get a survey, the surveyor said he could respond to it. He's basically followed all of his licensed requirements that, that he knew to follow and meet as a surveyor. And um, that was the gist of his response. Uh, yeah. Can I speak to that? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not denying that that lot is not what it says it is and what the surveyor's saying is. All what I'm saying is somewhere in that street, I feel like there's, it's gone 18 years without it being built on or however long it's been at this point, 15 years. There was a reason why it wasn't built on. There's some type of discrepancy between what was originally platted and what is in the field. And I just think there's, uh, that needs to be resolved before a decision like this can be made okay. to make sure that future homeowners or uh, current homeowners aren't going to have an issue with the lot. Yeah, the lot. and and partially to that, I don't know if it if it went far enough or not. But uh, when we received the first survey, it was more of like a, an immediate survey in the in the just for the lot. And so, uh, you know, in in discussions, we went back to them and had them survey a second time and go out and at least tie it to a street. So uh, the applicant went a little bit further in their survey and expanded it out, at least to go to the next closest street. Now what it does to the, uh, to the lot as a whole, uh, I'm not sure just as staff as, as how to answer whose responsibility that would be to pay for such a survey and to go into that big a depth. But, I have to think that, you know, I, I received a survey from a licensed surveyor, and, and that's, that's what I've submitted over. Um, and I'm not a surveyor, so if I just may, for the record. If I may, uh, wouldn't the obligation to redo a survey of the entire state, wouldn't that fall to the previous developer who supposedly encroached upon this property? So, I mean, obviously, the, the developers long gone build out mm -hmm. subdivision. Um, it would be on the, you know, the burden would be on the individual property owners. So, you know, mm -hmm. the question really is, um, you know, there probably are some issues with the other lots. Is that, you know, this one property owner's burden mm -hmm. uh, to survey the entire block? Um, from a you know from a staff perspective, mm -hmm. we did ask them to go a little bit above and beyond because of the situation, but didn't feel that you know it, it was it was um, definitely undue burden for him to do the whole block mm -hmm. to submit for this request. Can I also address that issue? Just to give you some additional information on that. Uh, several months ago, the town of Indian did, Indian Trail did ask us for an expanded survey, and we used Carol Rushing, who is a licensed North Carolina surveyor, and he surveyed from the adjoining street at a cost of $3,000 to Habitat for Humanity, 
and he did exactly what the town of Indian Trail asked him to do. So he surveyed approximately seven lots, including lot 182, and presented that to the town of Indian Trail. And we found that we did have the 30 feet for that lot, but there have been some encroachments from other house properties, unbeknownst to us. Uh, to give you an example, we sold lot 206, and we did a full survey, and prior to selling that lot to an individual, we found that the homeowner on lot 207 had extended his canopy and his yard 10 feet onto lot 206. So we had to contact the homeowner, and he was not aware of where his lot line was, and so he expanded his yard onto lot 206 in a period of about two or three years. So. So there have been some situations where homeowners or uh, other individuals have set air conditioning units in places they should have been set or expanded things. But we did our due diligence and we did pay for the surveyor to come back out and meet all of the requirements so that the lot is 30 feet wide. And it's just a matter of a few inches that you're looking at in terms of the house uh, that, that they're asking to build on that property. Thank you. Does the board have any more questions for the parties or witnesses before we move to deliberation? Does any board member have a personal knowledge or uh, of additional facts relevant to this case that should be entered into the record? No. 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 Okay. Hearing no additional questions or presentation, of relevant facts, the board will now begin deliberation. The evidentiary hearing remains open so that the board may ask clarifying questions if needed. As a reminder, this board is tasked with deciding if, based on the evidence presented, this proposal meets the applicable standards. This decision cannot be based on the personal preference of board members, rather it is based on standards and evidence. Board members are encouraged to re reference the applicable st standards and specific evidence in their deliberation. For this particular case, the board is asked to decide, does the record include competent, relevant, and substantial evidence? <clears throat> We're just gonna take a moment and go through our worksheet here and anybody has any questions so you understand that each and chair uh, Madam Chair, feel free if, if you need to discuss anything with our seating situation right now. If you need to go around and discuss, okay. you can. All right, thank you. Can we ask if the property gone, has gone through planning and been approved? And the variance is happening now, or is the variance prior to them getting the, you know, their house approved? You, you can ask me that. Okay. So I was just going to ask if um, the project has gone through planning fully and been approved, or if the variance came first. The uh, project was approved years ago, uh, around 2003, okay. with Bonterra, mm -hmm. and uh, it's this... If, if this was a regular lot, they would be coming in for a, a zoning permit to build a house, okay. uh, as well as going to the county to get their permits. So, uh, yeah, we have to get this variance before they can 
get our zoning permit from us. And, and then they're going to come in with their revised plan that they have with the house being smaller and resubmit that as uh, a new property? They will submit that to, that to the county as part of their package to us for a permit. Okay. They'll just basically submit the survey. Um, so they still have to ha go through architectural review and like he was saying about the impervious and stuff, the hill stuff to go through stormwater and all this stuff like that. Yep. Okay. Madam Chairman, um, we request that when you make a vote or any of the board members, would you mind saying your name? Sometimes you speak, and I can't tell with the mask who's speaking. Oh, okay. Do you mind? A minute. Yes. Thank yep. you. Just for a quick clarification on uh, the last question from um, the chair. So as far as stormwater, I just want to make sure we, you know, we're completely transparent in, in how things are handled and approved. The stormwater would actually be handled as a subdivision. So this this additional lot was, you know, was um, taken into consideration when the original subdivision was platted, but there won't be any additional stormwater requirements for this builder. Oh, as it's it already went been through the original site plan. Correct. Okay. Motion to vote on the variance now. Does anyone have we to have to go through each question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an actual when you're ready, it's an actual vote. I heard overheard discussion. Uh, it's an actual vote on each of the findings of fact before the final vote, and if any, if any of them, all of them have to pass. So, Jim, just just a little more clarification. Based on what the builder has submitted in his plan. It meets the requirements of the town of Indian Trail on what he's proposed to build. And, he, and if I understand from some of the information that the Montero Homeowners Association, I'm assuming it's the part that does architectural stuff, has also approved this particular survey and plan. From from his testimony about the HOA, uh, yes, based on his answer for that, they have. Uh, and I, I can con I can testify that I spoke with uh, the HOA president for Bontier to confirm that that architectural approval had been obtained prior to this request being submitted to the board. Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, you know, it's boiled down to this this issue zoning wise. Uh, of what our department would handle for the town as as the thing that's that's holding it up. We had no other no other item on record uh, that could you know staff was doing research to find anything that would tell us that legally we would deny somebody to build uh, and on this approved lot and uh, when it came down to this uh, reducing the width of the lot. We wanted to put that to the Board of Adjustment to, to get their input.
Um, we can now take a motion on the finding of facts. Are we going by each each one? Mm -hmm. um, I would motion that there there would be um, unnecessary hardship would result if we adhere to the strict application. You can't start from there. Right? Pardon me? We have to start from number one, right? That is number one. Whoa. That's step one. Oh, step one. Oh. One of step one. <clears throat> right. Okay. Ah, oh, so, sorry. So, yes, the property is in the town's jurisdiction. Okay. So are we going straight to voting? Or are we sharing opinions first? Or what uh, here? Or? If, if, uh, if the chair finds that everyone is ready uh, with taking their notes or asking questions, uh, you can begin with number one and vote on each, each item that's in the findings of fact. And we're starting at step one? Yes. Okay. And please feel free as uh, whoever, whichever board member makes the motion, you know, if, if you want to state your opinion on why you agree, you know, um, adding to that is absolutely appropriate. And please make sure to say your name before you make your motion for the record. Do we start or chair or? Either, anybody, anybody can start. Um, mm -hmm. Step one of one is a property in the town's jurisdiction. Yes. Agree. 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 Is the application complete? Yes. Agree. Agree. Yes. Agree. Agree. Yes. We're, we're on a different list. Uh, the, see if uh, the findings of fact on the screen is the... So we are doing the findings of fact now. We're doing step, step two. two. Okay, so it's it's entirely appropriate if you want to go through step one, but part of what step one is is when staff receives the application, you know, we verify that it's in the town's jurisdiction. We're verifying that the application is complete and that the application um, complies with all the applicable requirements of the ordinance otherwise. So that, that's been verified, but certainly uh, feel free to do so again. I apologize. I didn't have the sheet that you have right in front of me. <laughs> Uh, so I, I move that we find um, the three questions in step one, is the property in the town's jurisdiction, is the application complete, and does the application comply with all applicable requirements of this ordinance in the affirmative? Agree. 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 I second that motion, Jarday Washington. <laughs> motion made by Austin Yao, my apologies. Cynthia Wiley, I motion that there would be an unnecessary hardship as a result of the strict application of this ordinance. Um, the highest and best use of this lot is residential, uh, single family, high density. I'm sorry, Cynthia, can you repeat that motion? I motion that there would be an unnecessary hardship as a result of the strict adherence. The very first one, is there an unnecess unnecessary hardship that would result from the strict application of the ordinance. And I motion that yes, that there yes, would be. Yes. Austin Yao, I'll second that motion. All in favor? I agree. Are you opposed? Uh, I move that there is a hardship that results from conditions that are peculiar to the property, such as location, size, or topography, on the grounds that the lot was encroached on by the previous developer on both sides and no similar cases exist in Bonterra Village. I, I, Jennifer Mari second that motion that yes, um, hardship would result from the conditions that are particular to the property. So how many yeses did we have? Three. Three. I'm opposing. Okay. 
for the record, what was the vote on that motion? 7-1. I think we That'd be 6-1. Six six one. One. Six, we only have yeah, 7 one. Six one. Six one. Uh, Aaron Cunningham, I motion that the hardship did not result from the actions taken by the applicant or the property owner and the act of purchasing property with the knowledge that circumstances exist that may justify the granting of a variance shall not be regarded as self-created hardship. Austin, yeah, I'll second that motion. Agree? Agree. All in favor? Uh, Austin, yeah. I did. On item number four, I, um, Motion that the requested variance is consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the ordinance. Aaron Cunningham, I second that. Second. I agree. All in favor? In favor. All opposed? Mm. I'm opposing. Okay. Um, I make a motion that the variance will neither result in the extension of a non-conforming situation in violation of Unified Development Ordinance Division 1400 nor authorize the initiation of a non-conforming use of land. I agree and make that motion that that is correct. Uh, Jennifer Marr. Aaron Cunningham, I second that motion. All in favor? Agree. agree. Okay, we've concluded the findings of fact. Is there a motion to approve, approve with conditions, or deny the request? Austin Yao, I make a motion to approve variance, uh, variance application case 2020-0029. I'll second that. All in favor? Approve. As presented. As presented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any opposed? Well, may I revise my motion, actually? I'd like to make a motion to revise my motion with the uh, established uh, conditions in, that staff requested in the application. I'll second that change. Agree. Motion to agree. Motion. Approve. All in favor? I'm sorry. The motion carries. The motion carries. Staff will draft and will sign the final written decision to reflect the vote and reasoning for this decision. The written decision will be provided to the applicant and other parties with right to such notice. Parties have 30 days to appeal this decision. close the meeting. Is, is there a planner's or planning report? There's not. Okay. So then I make a motion to adjourn. All right, coming in, I second that motion. All in favor? All in favor?